In this video I'm gonna show you how to make an easy system for saving and loading. Then we're gonna use this system to spawn the correct car into the game scene and also save our car even if we exit the game and re-enter it again. So let's begin. I'm gonna use the selection menu project that I created for a previous tutorial. If you want to download it, the link will be in the description. The first step is to make a save manager object and a save manager script. Then attach the script to this object. An important note here. We want to make sure that the save manager is located in the first scene of a game, in order for our save data to become available right away. Once you're done with this, open the save manager script and let's start coding. First of all, I'm gonna make the script into a singleton, so it can be accessed from any other script in our game. Next, I'm going to create two public methods called load and save. To make sure that we don't get any duplicate save manager objects, I'm gonna put in this piece of code that destroys every save manager that is not equal to this instance. So now we can start working on saving and loading, but before we implement the code, I want to demonstrate how it works with a simple visual example. The first step to save our data will be to place it inside the serializable class which I will call player data storage. Then we will use a binary formatter, which will convert all of this data into binary code, so basically zero and ones, making this method much more secure than saving the data into an XML or a JSON file. Next we'll take all of this binary code and simply place it into a DAT file, which I will call player info. So that's the save process for you. The loading is exactly opposite. In this case we're taking the binary data from the player info file, convert it back to its original format and place it inside the player data storage class. And from there we can use it in our game. So to make our saving work we first need to create a new binary formatter, then a new file stream which will create a new file, then place all the binary data inside it. In case the file is already created, the file stream will just overwrite its content. You might have noticed that I used application.persistentdatapath, which will let our game choose a directory flexibly. Let's say that you're making a game for both computers and smartphones. You cannot just choose a directory that works for your computer because it might not work for the smartphone. On Windows, for example, to find the location of this file, you need to go to the C drive, then open the users folder, then pick your username, then open app data, then local low, then the name of a company, then the name of the actual game. Which can also be an advantage in case you don't want your players to find a save file and try to play around with it. Alright, back to coding. The next step is to create a serializable class that I will call player data storage. We will place all the variables that we want to store inside this class before converting them into binary. Now inside the save method we can create a new object of type player data storage. Now you can start thinking about what you actually want to save inside this save system. In my case it's gonna be easy, I just want to save the current card that I selected, but for you it can be money, it can be player experience, it can be your current skin or weapon or anything else. Just keep in mind that you can only save primitive data types like numbers, booleans, strings, characters and arrays of these types. So you will not be able to save the position of the player for example, because it's a vector free. But what you can do instead is create an array that contains three floats and each one of them will contain the coordinate for each axis. I'm pointing this out just so you know the limitations of this system and how to get around them. Alright, back to business. As you can see here I created a public integer called current car inside the save manager script. Then I'm gonna create the exact same variable inside the player data storage class. You can also give them different names if you'd like, it's gonna work regardless, but I highly suggest that you give both of them the same name, so you don't get mixed up when saving and loading. Now we will go inside the save method and write data.currentcar equals to current car. So we're basically taking the current car that we have in the game right now and moving it to player data storage in order to serialize it and place it inside the file. If you have any more variables that you want to save, you can do it here, exactly like we did with the current car. Once you're done, we will use the binary formatter to serialize the data and close the file. Ok, now the saving is done and working. Now we need to take care of loading. The first thing that we want to do before loading is to check if the player info file exists and we're gonna use the same path. If it does exist, we're gonna create a new binary formatter and a new file stream, exactly like we did with the saving. This time though, we're not gonna say file.create, we're gonna say file.open then indicate the path to our file, 
then put a comma and say file mode.open because we want to open that file. Next we will create a variable of type player data storage and call it data. But this time we're not gonna create a new variable. We're gonna use the binary formatter to deserialize the file, then explicitly convert it into player data storage type. Next you're gonna write current car equals data.currentcar. Notice that this time the order is completely opposite than the one that we had in saving. And that's because this time we're taking the variable that we got from our save file and assigning it to our variable that we have inside the save manager, so it can be used in the game. Once we're done with all the variables, we can close the file. If you're getting any typing errors, make sure to include all these namespaces inside your script. Alright, the last thing that we need to do inside the script is to make sure that this object doesn't get destroyed, so it can be accessed in all of our scenes. And it also needs to load our save file every time you enter the game, so just put load inside the await method. Now the save system is complete, let's see how we can use it. I'm gonna switch to my car selection script and change the awake method into start. Then you're gonna say current car equals to save manager dot instance dot current car, which virtually means that you're taking the local variable from this script and replacing it with the variable that you got from our save file. Now I'm gonna go back one step and explain why I changed the awake method into start and why it was so important. So inside the save manager we're doing the loading inside the awake method, right? Which means that the data from our save file is going to become available only after that is completed. So if we try to get data from save manager inside the car selection script also in the awake method, that data is just not gonna be loaded yet. You are not going to get any errors, but it's just not gonna work. But because start is being executed only after wake is completed, we can safely guarantee that the data will arrive. Awesome, now we are loading our current car from the save file. Now let's make sure that we save our car every time we change it. To do this, go inside the change car method and write save manager.instance.currentcar equals to current car, which is our private integer variable from this script. After that, make sure to call the save method from inside the save manager. This is very important. Perfect. Now our saving system is working and we can finally test it. You will notice that now the game will remember the last card that you picked. So for example, if you selected the bus and you close the game, the next time when you reopen the game, you're gonna get the bus. Or if you got the Bugatti, the next time when you open the game, you're gonna get the Bugatti again. So here you have it, this is a fully functional saving and loading system that uses binary serialization. So if you came to this video expecting only this, this is the end. But because a lot of people asked me, hey, how do I take the card that I selected here and put it in the game, I'm gonna go the extra mile and show that as well. First of all, I'm gonna make a new button that will load another scene, and I will call it play. Then I'm gonna create a simple script called load level and attach it to this button. Inside the script I'm gonna delete everything we don't need and only leave a public void called load level number that takes in an integer argument. Then I'm gonna say scene manager .load scene and inside the parentheses I'm gonna use the index parameter. So now we can go back into Unity, select the play object and drag it into the on click field in our button. Now press on the function, then select load level, then select load level number. Inside the parameter field I'm gonna put in 1, because I want to load level 1 when this button is pressed. If we want to make this work we need to open the build settings and make sure to drag the current scene in there. I'm also gonna rename our scene to selection menu, just to keep everything organized. Now we need to create a new scene, which I will call game. Double click to open it and let's just place something inside it so it doesn't look empty. I'm gonna copy a piece of ground from our selection menu and put it in here. I'm also gonna change the camera position and angle until it looks more or less decent. Next let's create a new object, call it car controller and reset its position to be zero on all axes. Now go into the scripts folder and let's create a new script and call it car model. I'm gonna attach this script to the car controller object and I'm gonna open it. Our first step here will be to create an array of game objects which I will call car models. I wanted to make it public but there's no point in it so let's just make it private and add serialize field to it so we can edit it from Unity. So inside this class let's create an await method and a method called choose car model that will take in an integer parameter. 
So now inside the awake method we just need to put choose car model and inside the parentheses we're going to use save manager .instance .current car. So you might have noticed that before I said that we shouldn't really use data from save manager inside the awake method. But in this case it's okay because the car model is located in scene 1 while the save manager is located in scene 0. So until our player gets to scene 1 the loading will already be finished. But if you want to be sure and consistent with this you can just change the awake method into start. Now inside the choose car model I'm gonna use the instantiate method. Which will allow us to create an object based on an existing one. So inside the parentheses I'm gonna put four parameters. The first one is the car game object that we want to spawn and we're gonna take it from the car models array that we declared earlier. The second one is the position where we want to spawn the object and we want our car model to be in the same position as the car controller. This is why we're gonna put transform.position here. The third one is the rotation and I'm gonna use quaternion.identity because I want my car model to have the rotation zero on all axes. And the fourth one is the parent transform and because I want my car model to be parented to the car controller I'm just gonna use transform here. Now the final step is to choose the car controller object and fill in the car models array with all the prefabs that we need. The cars that I have are placed inside assets, 3D models, stylized vehicles and prefabs folder. You can drag them in one by one or all at once. What's important is that you maintain the same order as you have in the selection menu. So now this part is done and working, but what I noticed while testing this is that all of our cars are placed at different heights. So I started opening car prefabs and adjusting their position so they would look good on the screen. This part is not necessary for the system to work so I sped it up. If you still want to watch it and do it you can put the video in slow motion. Alright, our last step is to create a button that will allow us to return from this scene to the selection menu. To do this I'm gonna create a new image then put it in the bottom right corner. Once you're happy with the position you need to attach a button component to it and you can also put a sprite on it if you want it to look better. Now we need to attach the load level script to it and use the same method as we did before only this time we're gonna load level 0 not 1. Now if you edited all the car prefabs to make the position better like me you need to go back into the selection menu scene select all the cars under car holder and change the Y position on the car animation script to 0. And finally the last step is to open the build settings and add the game scene here as well. And now when you press play you can finally enjoy the result. You can select any car model now and when you press the bottom right button it will take you to the game scene and you will see the model from behind. And thanks to our saving system, the game will always remember which car you had last, so we achieved everything we wanted to achieve in this video. As always, I want to thank you for watching, congratulations on getting this far, and if the video was useful, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on what I should do next, feel free to tell me in the comments or on Discord. That's it, happy holidays, stay safe, and keep making games.